Believe it or not, this is an experiment. The question, what happens to an object when it's at rest? Will it go anywhere or will it just sit there? Let's see. If this gets too exciting, let me know. Let's give this a little time. While we're waiting, Z has an experiment that's a little more active. How can I get this ball to move? I can hit the ball with my hand and the ball moves. Or I can hit it with my elbow or kick it or knock my head into it. See, the ball will move whenever I apply a new force. I could also use a tool to apply some force, like Tennis, anyone? Or even a broom? Well, it'll do the job. You see, there are lots of ways to apply force to this ball to get it to move. But if there's no force, there isn't going to be any movement. I know another way to get the ball to move. Great, Stephanie. Let's see it. Gee. Thanks. The ball moved. It moved all right. And I never touched it. So what force made the ball move this time? What pulled the ball to the floor? Uh-huh. A different kind of force. Gravity. Our planet is really grabby. on objects pulling everything down. You might call this bad manners. Scientists call it gravity. Gravity always gets what it wants, and it never takes a day off. Gravity is always there, and it always pulls with the same force. So, gravity is something that we can depend on because it is a force that never changes. And we can show you how that works. We'll use a machine to shoot some balls. Watch the path the ball makes through the air. The machine shoots the ball at the same speed every time. If gravity is really constant, then every ball we shoot should make that same path through the air. Because gravity will always pull the ball down exactly the same way. To show this, we set up these three hoops five feet apart. We adjusted them so that they match the flight of the first shot. Now, will every ball fly through the hoops? Let's see. Every ball did it. The path is exactly the same. So, 
Gravity may be grabby, but at least it's consistent. That helps us predict the movement of objects. Hmm. If flying balls are so predictable, yes, baseball should be a pretty boring game. Because if the batter can predict where every pitch is going to go, it should be easy to hit the ball every time. Ah, the pitchers know a thing or two about gravity. Here's a softball pitcher who doesn't let gravity get her down. Barbara Rinalda is one of the best fast pitch softball pitchers in the world. She plays for the High Hope Raquettes, a Stratford, Connecticut team that has won championships around the world. Whoa, strike one. <laughs> Dr. Richard Brandt of New York University's physics department and I visited Barbara to see how she pitches. How fast is that going? We clocked it earlier at about 70 miles an hour. All right, here's the rise ball. Sometimes Barbara's pitches seem to defy the laws of gravity. As you swing, sometimes the ball seems to rise, and other times it seems to curve toward the ground. Her pitches never seem to go where I thought they would. Whoa, that's strike three. <laughs> Let's have a conference on the mound. How long do I have to hit that pitch? You have about a half a second. Not long. No, but I think she's doing something else there. <laughs> That's right, there is something else. She's putting spin on the ball. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, just a matter of flip of the wrist. So in one way it's spinning with top spin, the other way with bottom spin, and that affects how it falls. So gravity plays a part in the path of the ball. That's right, the ball is falling because of gravity, and at the same time it's moving horizontally because she threw it, mm -hmm. and the interplay of these two motions determines the flight of the baseball. Well, I never thought that physics played a part in uh, a batter trying to hit a pitched ball. Oh, baseball and softball contain a lot of physics. Richard set up an experiment that could help me realize how Barbara's pitches work. To understand how spin makes a ball seem to rise or drop, first I had to understand the flight of a ball that doesn't spin. What do you think will happen here? If an object is dropped straight down and at the same time and from the same height, another object is thrown horizontally toward the first object, which one do you think will hit the ground first? Todd, this is a classic demonstration that illustrates the physics of flight. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is fire this ball out of this air gun. When the ball leaves the gun, it's going to trip a magnet, which will drop that can. So the ball leaves the gun at the same time the can starts to fall. This ball doesn't look very much like a softball. No, it's very different, but in fact, that's one of the beauties of the theory of gravity. The a gravitational acceleration of an object is independent of the size or the shape or the weight of the object. Gravity treats everything equally. Everything equally. Okay, here we okay. go. In it goes. It's triggered. <laughs> Great. Neither object hits the ground first. The objects meet before they can hit the ground. Here's the slow motion replay. The thrown object falls at the same rate as the dropped object. Both are pulled down by the force of gravity. A softball pitch must obey the same force. The ball takes a particular predictable path determined by the speed of the pitch and gravity. If the ball were pitched the same way every time, a batter could quickly learn to judge this path and hit the ball every pitch. But there are some tricks a pitcher can use. What's all this? This is a wind tunnel. We use it to simulate the flight of a ball. In this case, it's a golf ball, but its motion is very similar to that of a softball. Both have rough surfaces to grab the air. Dimples for the golf ball, threads for the softball. Richard's second experiment demonstrated how a pitcher can change the way a ball normally drops. In the wind tunnel, he had suspended a perfectly balanced golf ball that would move up or down with the slightest pressure. Using pulleys and a motor, he could also make the ball spin. When the wind is turned on, it simulates a ball flying through the air. Nothing happened to the ball at first. It stayed in the middle of the tunnel as the air blew past it. Then, Richard turned on the spin. And rise. Great. When the rotation stops, the ball returns down. So that's the riser. The ball is spinning in this direction, grabbing the air, forcing it down, and responding upwards. Right. Now to show the sinker, which spins in the opposite direction, I'll reverse the direction of spin by turning around that. And now it's as if the ball is rotating in this direction. 
So now the threads grab the ear, shoot the ear up, and the ball responds downward. So now what you'll see happen when the spin starts is that the ball will sink. Turn on the ear again. Here comes the spin. The ball sinks. The spin is off. Back up. A pitcher's job then is to make a ball rise and fall by spinning it forward or reverse backward when he or she wants it to. That's right. Oh, okay, I think I got Barbara's number now. Maybe I can hit her pitches. Woo! That was great. Uh, Barbara, can you show me what you do with your fingers and wrist to uh, make the ball rise and drop? Sure. What we do on the drop ball is we hold our fingers across the seams as close together as possible mm -hmm. so that there's one pressure point. Then when you throw, you release the ball so that your wrist is over the top and the ball spins downward. Right, and then and it drops, drops down, right. Mm -hmm. Now just the opposite on the rise ball, it's a little bit harder to throw because you have to get all the way underneath it so that your wrist leads and the ball spins back towards you. And let it go before it hits you. Right, <laughs> right. We usually release it down here somewhere because otherwise it'll be way out of the strike zone. Right, okay. I'm gonna see what I can do about hitting some of those. <laughs> no way. All right. When Barbara throws her fastball, it doesn't spin much, so it falls with gravity. Her rise ball hangs in the air longer and comes in higher than you think. The drop ball comes in lower. What makes it difficult is all three pitches look the same until it's too late. All right. Uh... Throw me a drop off. All right, man. here it comes. Whoa. What do you want now, the riser? Yeah. All right. Wow. Gee, all right. <laughs> all right, here comes another one. Okay. Yeah. One more. All right. You ready now? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm really trying. <laughs> All right, here comes the rise ball. All right. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> All right! <laughs> yeah! That's a beautiful sound. Remember this experiment? I wanted to know what happens if no force is affecting something. Nothing happens. This has not been a very moving experience. To make something move, you must apply force. If you don't, it will just sit there. Gravity is a force. It's grabby. It pulls things toward the Earth. And it treats everything the same. It's consistent and predictable. That's why softball pitchers have to have a few tricks up their sleeves. By putting spin on the pitch, they can change a ball's predicted path. One Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.